Salute, Nick family. Welcome to the Cram to Understand You Fan Focus Series. Today is the call-in show. You could call into the show. We're going to drop the link. If you want to hop on the panel, we're talking about Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson is probably not the lightning rod that Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett is, but he still has his detractors. Um, so we're going to talk about um, Mitchell Robinson today. I'm going to start with my take. I'm going to get that out of the way. If you're subscribed to the newsletter, a lot of this is in the newsletter. That's coming out tomorrow. I'm a little late this week. Um, but if you don't get a chance to, to, to read the newsletter, I'm going to give you my take right now. Also, Jeff Clafter, resident panelist on this show, recorded a podcast, and he was really... He was really good, you know, as was Staffordon, as was Anthony D, and talking about Mitchell Robinson and his support of Mitchell Robinson, that we can wit win with him, what he brings to the team. So I'm going to drop that link in the chat as well. If you get an opportunity, wherever you get your, you listen to your podcast, uh, the Just Nick and It show, you'll be able to find that that show, but I'm going to drop it in the chat as well. So this is my take on, on Mitchell Robinson. I respect him. I know some of you don't believe that. And I respect what he brings to this team. I'm just going to read a few stats. According to cleaningtheglass.com, a subscription is required. His offensive rebounding percentage is 17.2%, which is in the 98th percentile for his position. He has a block percentage of 3.5% which is 93rd in the 93rd percentile, a still percentage of 1.5%, which is in the 87th percentile. Whatever the stat is, whether it's plus minus win shares, box plus minus or net rating, Mitchell Robinson is a plus. You'd have to look at on off numbers to see anything negative. When Mitchell Robinson is on the floor, the Knicks are better defensively. When Mitchell Robinson is off the floor, the Knicks are better offensively. Jalen Brunson, for one, offensive rating is much better when Mitchell Robinson um, is, is off the floor. But my argument is not that Mitchell Robinson doesn't help this team. He does. His defense, including his rim protection, helps us. Given the lack of perimeter defenders that we had, his offensive rebounding helps us given how poorly we shoot percentage-wise um, any, um, anyway. So the question for me is not whether what he brings is important to this team. And I think, you know, with us, the, the Nick fan base, whenever someone has criticism of Mitchell Robinson, it's taken as if we don't know what he brings on the defensive end or as far as offensive rebounding and how important that is to this team as it's presently constructed. I think many, um, many of us do. But the question for me is not if what he brings isn't important. The question for me is not even about Mitchell Robinson directly. I think the question for me is what is possible for our offense with a center who is a scoring threat? That's the question for me. If we have a center that can shoot and space the floor can he be a net positive, even if he's not a good a defender as Mitchell Robinson? If we are a better shooting team, do we need an elite offensive rebounder at center? If we're a better perimeter defending team, do we need a rim protector as good as Mitchell Robinson? I think when people think about Mitchell Robinson's importance, it's based on how this team is presently constructed, but this team can be reshaped. Like we're not stuck with this team. This team could be reshaped in a, in a different way where you can still be successful, even if you don't have the offensive rebounding or, um, you know, or the, the, the rim protection. So the Knicks were fifth in offensive rating, which is points scored per 100 possessions. But it wasn't because of our offensive efficiency. It wasn't because we shot the ball well. We had a formula that allowed us to score points. Let me 
Keep the turnovers low. Don't give away possessions. Get second chance points. We rank third in second chance points with 16.2 per game. Limit the opposing team's second chance points. Take a lot of threes. We were ranked 21 out of 30 teams in the NBA in three-point percentage. But we were eighth in attempts. So even though we didn't shoot it well, the philosophy was if you get enough up, you know, you're still going to score via three-point shooting. Same thing with free throw shooting. We rank 23rd in free throw percentage, but third in attempts. Same thing. If you get up enough of them, you're going to get points from, um, you know, from your from your free throw. So, you know, some of you are wondering why the focus on offense. For me, I think it's going to be the Knicks will have a better chance of advancing in the player. And, and, and this, you know, I, I, I'm okay with the pushback on, on this, but I think the Knicks, it'll be easier for the Knicks. And I think they'll have a better chance of going further in the playoffs with an offense that has more floor spacing, right? With a center who at least is a threat on the offensive end and, and better three point shooting, both of them. Imagine what our offense would be. You got a center who's a scoring threat and you have three-point shooting around Brunson and 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 Randall. That that's pretty, you know, that that's pretty dynamic. And why that's important for me is in the Miami series, they limited our second chance points. And therefore they limited Mitch's impact on offense. Then they were able to use Mitch's man to crowd the key make it difficult for us to score. In other words, they relegated the Knicks to a jump shooting team, something we were not good at. And that's not all Mitch's, that's not all Mitch's fault. This is why I'm advocating for a scoring center and better, you know, better three point shooting. I think that's going to help us. Do we need to be a good defensive team as well? We do, but there are teams that are good defensively and they don't have rim protectors. Like how are they doing it? You know, is it schemes? Is it that they have better perimeter defenders? However they're doing it, I think we need to look at that or the front office needs to look at that. So I'm, I'm just trying to move away from this idea that we absolutely need Mitchell Roberts. Like there's no other way you can construct a team that's going to be successful without Mitchell Robinson. I think we can. I just think some ch some changes need to be made. And again, it's not really about Mitchell Robinson as much as it is about a center who can score. So I guess it is about, I guess it is about um, Mitchell Robinson. If I had to choose between a scoring center and more three-point shooting, right now I would take more three-point shooting. But eventually I still feel that we need a scoring threat from that position. So that's my take on Mitchell Robinson. And it's really not about Mitchell Robinson. It's more about what does our offense need to look like in order to advance further in the playoffs? And that I'm okay with our defense being a little less, our rent protection being a little less for a better offense that's not based on a formula. That's what our offense is based on. It's based on a formula because we don't have three-point shooting. The other thing I want to mention about the key being clogged, the Knicks – are ranked 17th in taking shots at the rim and 21st in making shots at the rim within four feet. And you wonder how much of that is because Mitch's man is right there in the key. You know, it's, 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 it's not a lot of space. So anyway, that's my take, but I'm going to open it up to the panel and then I'm really looking forward to you guys calling in and giving your opinion. Again, not a lot of pushback. This is really about just trying to understand each other so let me bring the panel in salute so jarell jeff ajay how's everyone awesome all right all right salute yeah salute salute to the chat all right. amen so i know thursday show we we gave them a little preview of what we thought about mitchell robinson so i'm just going to ask y'all to Go over that again real quick while I drop this link in the in the chat. Jarrell, Jeff, Ajay. 
Okay. Um, I'll go first. Um, suit to everybody, Jeff, AJ, you are my brothers in Nick's arms here. Uh yeah, it's hard to go after Steph when it comes to Mitchell Robinson, because I pretty much agree what she said. Like uh, across the board, we've been agreeing about Mitchell Robinson for a couple years now. Uh I'm one of those people who actually like to have, you know, a little bit of offense with my center. Not trying to devalue what Mitch does because he obviously has value to the team. He's not a um like a like a net negative. No. Like I, I don't yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people think just because we want somebody that's able to score, meaning like thinking like Mitch is some bum that we don't need or he doesn't help the team at all. It's not that at all. It's just a, like a difference of play, like a we need a different skill set at that position, especially like in today's game. I think I was a little bit um, spoiled watching Denver play in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Not saying not saying that Mitch or anybody else that we bring in here is going to do what Joker does. It's not about that. I like the fact that all five players on the floor can shoot. That's what I would like. That's what I would like to see. Um, I would like to not have a – um, like the opposing center clogging up the lane for Jalen Brunson. We obviously know that he likes going to the hole. We obviously know um, RJ's game is going to the basket as well. So that combined with Julius Randle being the type of power forward that, that he can score at will at every um, at every level. So he goes inside a lot too. So if we can get somebody that – it doesn't have to be somebody like Miles Turner that just shoots threes all the time. As long as we can get somebody that has touch around the basket and can shoot a mid-range jump shot when he has to, like if if he's completely wide open, if you give the ball to Mitch, he's just going to pass it. We need somebody that can hit that little that little jumper and have touch around the basket. Until we have that on a consistent basis, I don't see us – like we can get far in the playoffs. Obviously, we wasn't that far from getting to the um, Eastern Conference Finals, but – in order for us to actually win a championship, we would need somebody that can do that. Even if we have Mitch on the bench, it's not like I just want to trade him for, you know, a bowl of cereal or anything. We need somebody at that position at a different skill set than Mitch in order for us to go forward. So even if that person is not a starter, even if that person is on the bench and just giving us some versa- versatility, we need, okay. Right, exactly. Especially since um, we thought when Hartenstein came here, we thought he was going to shoot more. Even if he shot more at a decent clip, that would kind of solve our problem. It wouldn't have to be a superstar like Embiid. Right. Mitch can still come in here. Or Mitch can still play the amount of minutes that he played because it's not like he played a whole bunch of minutes anyway. And he gets hurt often. So we just need somebody with a different skill set than Mitch in order for us to win a championship, I think. It's not like we don't need Mitch at all. Right. Okay. All right. Jeff? I don't want to take up a lot of time because I I want to hear from from the folks, but uh, I do want to say a couple things. Um, Just uh, first of all, with the way the roster is presently constructed, with three high usage starters like we have, I think it's kind of ideal to have a guy who doesn't soak up any usage or need any shots, um, I, I, especially when that guy is an outstanding offensive rebounder. I think that fits into what we're doing now. Um, that doesn't mean that we, as Queen said, we can rearrange and reorder the roster, you know, and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm open to those possibilities, but I think for the team that we have now with, probably I would say two and a half negative defenders in the starting lineup, depending on what, what mood uh, Julius is in. Um, And I, I just consider Barrett a net negative on defense right now. And, uh, and I I think that Brunson tries hard on defense, but, but I I think the numbers bear out that he's not a plus player on that end of the floor. Um, I really think that having to cover for that, is 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 a difficult task and i'm not sh- there are people out there that can do it but i'm not sure that just anybody can do it and i'm not sure that it's i'm not sure that it's as easy as a zero sum game where you can say i'm going to sacrifice a little bit of defense to get a little bit more offense i don't know I, I think that may be an oversimplification whereas 
uh, you know, a lot of times what we saw with uh, the likes of Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier last year or two years ago, they came in and we said, well, we'll sacrifice a little bit of our defense um, to have more offense. And, and it didn't work at all. But that and wasn't ever- a little bit, Jeff, in all fairness. <laughs> that wasn't a, a sacrifice and a little bit of defense with those two. But go ahead. Right. Well, but but uh, the point is this, though, careful what you wish for. In other words, how do we know how much we we have a known quantity with what Mitchell Robinson is going to do a baseline. Um, if you bring someone else in here, if it's someone like Miles Turner, I'm not worried about it. But I'm not what I'm saying in this point is center X isn't necessarily the guy like like just a, a run of the mill you know, average Joe center. I don't know if, if they're going to, to do that as well. Although Nerland's Noel did a pretty excellent job of it when Mitchell was out and a couple of years ago. So I, I will grant that point. Um, mm-hmm. And so, uh, but you know, he had similar issues. So <laughs> on the, on the offensive end of the floor, if not more so, so interestingly enough, but um Anyway, the, the, that's neither here nor there. So, so to me, I, I, I like the I like what Mitch does bring to the table. I'm not so much worried about the things that he doesn't do. Um, is are there opportunity? If there's an opportunity to upgrade, fine. But uh, like like Jarrell said, I don't want to just get rid of him because I I think he is a super valuable player. Um, I think the things that he brings to the table are are winning things. And I think one of the questions that you want to ask yourself when you're talking about our center position is think about what are the top three things you want out of your five spot for, for this roster or for this team, not necessarily even this roster for this team. What are the top, what are your priorities? One, two, and three for what you need your center to do. And keep in mind that Jalen Brunson and Julius Randall are probably going to be part of that equation. So factor that into what you're talking about. And I think for me, who's a defense first guy, and, and I love what he does with the rebounding, those are two of my check boxes. And so, you know, and the third one, he actually doesn't check. The third one would be good free throw shooting. Um, and he doesn't check that box. But, um, but I, so my, I think when we're framing this conversation, it's what, do you prioritize from the five spot? What what are the best things to get out of the five spot for, from this team as it's currently constituted and moving forward? And then when you have the answers to those questions, well, does Mitchell Robinson fit into those criteria or does he not fit into those criteria? And if he doesn't fit into that, those criteria, then yes, that's probably the time to move on. But for me, I think he checks more of those boxes than he doesn't. Right. For me, he doesn't. Number one is defensive rebounding. I I think we need his offensive rebounding because we're not a good shooting team. And so we need those second chance opportunities. But defensive rebounding is 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 number one um, for me. If you're not a rebounder, at least be a position um, defender, like be where you're supposed to be on those rotations. And again, if you have perimeter if if okay Brunson is not a plus defender but if you got Grimes at the two and uh uh OG and Anobi at the three do you need an elite rim protection protector at the at the five position I don't think you do you know I don't think you need to have a cone back there like that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying that we could just get anybody back there what I'm saying is there's ways to construct the team where you can get somebody who's a bit more a threat. I'm not even talking about, because you're right, Jeff, in terms of the usage between Barrett, Brunson, and and, and Randall. I'm not talking about that we got to get um, Mitch 10 shots a game and we got to be able to throw it down. I'm just saying he needs to be a threat on the offensive end. What, not him. Whatever center we get needs to be a threat and that overall that's going to help our defense from this formulaic offense that we're running where we got to get up so many three pointers because we don't shoot it well we got to get up so many free throws because we don't shoot it well we got to get free throw percentage we need a center that's a scoring threat in my opinion and improve three point shooting and that would transform the Knicks offense in my opinion so but to your point 
I need a center that can defensively rebound. I need a center that can be where he's supposed to be on the defensive end in terms of rotations. And I need a center who is an offensive threat. That's what, you know, that's, you know, that's what I need. And, and, and that's what I think is going to make the Knicks in this NBA right here better. Because you're going to be able to play Mitchell Robinson right off the floor the deeper you get um, in, in the playoffs, in my opinion. AJ? And, oh, Jeff, did you did you have anything else to... to... No, that's good. That's good. Salute to you, Queens. Salute to the panel. Salute to the chats. Salute to all of Knicks Nation, whoever's listening to this after we, we come off the air. Um... I'm okay with Mitch. If we keep Mitch the way this team is right now, I'm okay. If we get rid of him to upgrade, you know, to, I mean, really upgrade, I'm okay. But like you all will discuss, was discussing, it, it depends on how the team is constructed. In my opinion, right now, the way this team is, Mitch is fine because we're not a great shooting team, so we need those rebounds, Okay. Um, we have a couple of weak links on defense, so we need Mitch not just not only to uh, to 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 defend in the paint, but then you need him to run out on a three point line. And which is you know Queen, you mentioned that you need those defensive rebounds. A lot of times he cannot get those defensive rebounds because of that purpose, because he's covering for somebody else um, who get beat you know you know out, out on the perimeter. So he's running. Um, for what we have right now, and with oh, and with the volume shooters that we have, right? We have RJ Barrett who takes a million shots a game. We have Julius Randle who takes another million. Same with uh, uh, Jalen Brunson. Having, I think it's more important that we have a good defensive center than we have one that's more focused on offense because there's not enough ball to go around. If we if we add another guy who wants to take you know 15, 18, you know. 12, 15 shots a game, another center who wants to do that, and then give up on rebounds because he's more focused on on um, on uh, scoring the basketball. For what we have right now, I think Mitch is fine. But but that's the same thing I said. For what we have right now, yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm and, talking about reshaping the team altogether well, <laughs> so that we well, could be a, 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 a legitimate championship um, um, team. Well, then anyway. it's it's not just Mitch because now now we're gonna have to it's it's overall, right? Because now it, you're not just getting rid of Mitch, you're getting rid of Mitch and some other people. No, well, Mitch, get a perimeter defender, get a scoring center who's a threat. I'm not talking about somebody that's coming in here taking 50 shots, but who's a threat and a perimeter defender and three point shooting, and that might be a lot. But I'm saying it's not like we went in the championship this year. That's my vision in terms of reshaping the team over a few seasons. I'm not, I, you know, it, it is what it is right now. Right. We had the RJ, we had the RJ show last week, said the same thing about him. Right. Right. But, uh, oh, did I, yes, I dropped the, the link is in the chat for whoever wants to hop on. And I just want to highlight some comments JJ can't be playing four versus five, especially versus smart teams in the playoffs. Gerald B, the coach doesn't want points from the centers or or he there there would have been changes, I guess he's saying already. Dunn Rose Gallman, appreciate you. A center is hard to get this season. I was thinking to get Turner this season, but I changed my mind to not get him on on the Knicks. Okay. Deron Wayne, if can't score, at least be able to shoot free throws. Yeah. True. Um would you start iHeart and bring Mitch off the bench? I would do that if we had better perimeter defenders. Right. If we had better perimeter defenders, I would I would I would start iHeart. And he started for us for a you know, not the majority of the season, but he started for us for a good chunk of the season. It was wasn't that much of a drop off, right? 
I would like to say a couple things in, in regards to the rebounding after you go ahead and finish up these uh, sure. Sure. super team for or chats for putting pressure on Mitch to shoot is useless when our wings can't even shoot. I don't think at, at least for me, I'm not putting pressure on Mitchell Robinson to shoot. I'm employing the Knicks to get a right. shooting um, a, a center. That's a threat. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm not putting pressure on Mitch to shoot. Mitch is who he, you know, Mitch is who he is. And for this team, as presently constructed, I agree. He's the best center right now for the way this team is um, constructed. All right. Let's see. Christopher McNair, James Wiseman could be had for a mid to late first. Looking pretty good during summer league. Okay. Grimes and Mitch are the only defenders in the start. Listen, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing um, with that. Yeah, I want to trade Mitch for a red carpet to the paint. Coach Sierra 617. I don't, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think that's what I'm saying. All right. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just want to scroll down. Um, but be sure to hop on a, a lot of people are very opinionated in the chat. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. If you click on that link, you'll be right in the show. Well, not right in the show. I'll have to let you in, but I'll mm -hmm. be able to see that you're waiting to get on the panel. If you're camera shy, Keep your camera off. You could just come in audio. If you want to call on the phone, you can call in. But there's a lot of comments, um, you know, in the Don't, in be, the afraid. Chat. don't yeah. be afraid. We don't bite. Right. We do. G something. Fresh. Appreciate you. Um, G, G and G Fresh hopped on. I just saw him in the chat and, and he <laughs> hopped on. Give me one minute, G Fresh. Let me finish going through these. Keith Turner. Salute, Keith. Keith always rocking with us. I appreciate you. I like Ooh. Mitch, but that five position needs to upgrade. What's wrong with improving? But people will call it being a hater. Y'all always want someone else until that person. I don't have a particular person in my. I don't know who's available. Um, Steph, who can we get? So see, for me, and, and we talked about this again, if you haven't already listened to the podcast, the link is in the description as well. But wherever you get your podcast, the Just Nick and It podcast is there. I don't think it's about getting somebody better than Mitch. You can get somebody who's a better fit for the team and change some other things around the team and you'll have a better team. If that's if that makes sense, I don't think it's it's about you have to get somebody who run protects like Mitch, who defends like Mitch, and can also shoot and be a three. I don't I don't I don't I don't think so. That person can be less than Mitch in some areas and better than Mitch in other areas, and the team could still be better. All right, let me. Okay, Ivory 10. He said he would like to come on, but he's not in the right place. All right. That's all good. Um, uh, um, understood. Jeff, you want to say something real quick? And then I got G Fresh in the back and I got AD in the back. Yes, I was going to say, keep in mind, and this is one of the things that we covered in the podcast too, is that Mitch plays next to one of the best defensive rebounders in the game in Julius Randle. He's an outstanding defensive rebounder. So if he's getting 25 and a half percent of the defensive rebounds, that's less rebounds left over for everybody else. And if you look at Mitchell Robinson's re defensive rebounding percentage from last year, it actually increased dramatically from from his career numbers. So I do think he is improving as a defensive rebounder. And I, I also think that that when you have, you know, when you have someone who, who I mean, Randall gets every board, a crunch time board. You know, he just is a is, is a he's a glass eater. And so, you know, I think between the two of them, you're probably talking about 45 percent of the rebounds just between those two guys. And I don't really care if Randall has more of those than Mitch. I don't think 
that reflects badly on either player. But the fact that he's getting better, playing right beside Julius Randle, is letting you know that he wasn't a really good defensive rebounder. Even even Tibbs said he's getting better with defensive rebounding. Why is he better this year and he wasn't like he, – he's just not a good defensive rebounder. It's okay. I, I you know, People want to say, oh, it's because of Randall. It's because of this. He's closer to the basket than Randall. So he can get 25%. Randall can be the odd person out. He's just not a good defensive rebounder in my opinion. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's cool. He can't be everything. You know, he can't be everything. But let me bring on G Fresh. G Fresh, G Fresh, <laughs> oh my God, how you doing? Good, good, good. You know, man, I had a lot going on. I just moved to Charlotte like three months ago, like three weeks ago. So, yeah, nice. yeah, nice, nice. Well, what what's your take on um on 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 Mitchell Robinson? I think this is fine. I think he's really fine. You know, as far as he fits this team because clearly, you know, when we don't have Mitch, we're a different, a different team. I think more of my issue is when Tibbs don't understand when to take Mitch out in certain situations of the game. I think there's a lot of, like, I think what really bothered me, especially in the Miami series, I felt like once uh, they uh, had uh, at a bio, the Randall, because he's, you know, about a place to five. Once you have that situation where you have Adebayo being Randall at the five, automatically Tim should have thought, okay, I'm going to go small. He never went small. Because now you got now you force uh, Mitchell to play in space with Kevin Love, which Kevin Love, he's a don't, – don't get it twisted. He's still a good rebounder at his age, you know, regard, you know regardless of, you know, he's not an all-star anymore or all-star kind of player anymore, but – he still could get it done. You, and you watch that series where, you know, uh, Kevin Love got some key rebounds those, the, uh, in, those, in, in, in those games. So I think the issue is, uh, I think Tim's understanding when to take Mitch out, when to put Randall at the five, because Randall is very capable of playing at the five. We see him play the five at, with the Lakers. We see him uh, play the five, especially when he was at the Pelicans. Because remember, it was a point where AD was hurt. And when uh, sometimes when they would take Boogie off the bench, they put Randall at the five. So he's capable of p- playing the five is that Tibbs don't want to play him at the five. And I felt like that kind of also kind of translate why Obi got out of here. Because I felt like you could have coexist with those two guys. You know, I think uh, Tibbs tried early in the season, but he didn't, he didn't re- really give it the opportunity to, you know, to work and manifest where you could have had Obi at the four and, um, you know, Randall at the five. Or even sometimes not even have uh, Obi at the five. You know, uh, Hart, I'm not Hart. Uh, um, Hart is capable of uh, playing, not um, the other Hart. Uh, Isaiah Hardenstein. Not Hart, Isaiah. Josh Hart. Um, oh, Josh Hart. Yeah, Josh Hart is very capable in certain situations. He could play the four. Portland did it. Uh, the Pelicans did it. It is that Tibbs is just very conventional with his style. So I get why the, the, the situation, why people feeling like, oh, I don't think Mitch is the right fit. No, Mitch is the right fit for this team. It's just that Tibbs don't understand when to take Mitch out. And I know it will be very frustrating for Mitch to then in certain situations where he might not get 30 minutes a night. In certain games, he might, he might just get 18 based off the, just the, the, the type of teams we're playing. Oh, you st- you muted, Steph. You muted, Steph. Good point, G Fresh. I appreciate you hopping on. Yes. Um, come back anytime if you ever want to join the panel and be on for the entire show. You're definitely welcome. Thanks, Steph. You know, you know what? Uh, once I get my little studio, you know, situated, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a regular. Get, get Are you still doing the sneakers? Like, I can still send my sneakers. Like, let me know when your business is back up and running. Oh no, it's already back up and running. The sneakers is definitely the customs are still there. Uh, I'm still doing, you know, my restorations. So no, that hasn't stopped. So that's why it was really taking a lot of my time. Why I couldn't, you know, do the show because I got so many orders of just doing like sneaker cleaning. You got a customs. website? Like where do I put no, my order in at? Um, actually, I, I'm still getting my website built. By um, you can contact me on my uh, my IG. So it's literally my G Fresh. You see the name. 
You can mm -hmm. put TV on Instagram. You can just DM me from there, and okay. then yeah, just let me know, Steph. Or you know, I got you got my Twitter too. So I yeah, do. hit me on Twitter. Yeah, just let me know what you need. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do that. Yes, yes, yes. But keep on doing your thing. You know, I'll be watching because I always get the notifications. So I'll be. I don't comment, but I just watch. You know, I appreciate so I, it. I love how this this whole thing just materialized. Steph, you know how you just became a regular on you know Sim Show, and now you're doing your own thing. So I'm just really proud of you, sis. I'm really proud Appreciate of you. It. Keep on doing Appreciate your thing, it. and everybody in the panel, you know, keep on doing your thing, man. You know, I love I love what y'all doing. So you know, I'm gonna be watching. So Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Settle into Charlotte. I'll be in your DM soon. <laughs> All right, sis. All right, talk to you. All right, bye -bye. Ad, come back. Curtis D, his d device is not connected. So whoever wants to hop on the panel, AD, if you're still around. Oh, here he is. Yeah. Are you there, Curtis? Curtis? I'm here. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Queen. Good evening. Good evening, good evening panel. Um, so I'm a long-time listener, but I'm very listening live. I'm always here to record. But nice. I, I would just want to say I'm here to defend Mitch. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> is and the thing is I'm I'm not I'm not opposing anybody who has a different opinion of uh the, what the center position is. I think is is a matter of how we perceive what each position is and who should be playing that position. But Mitch is my type of center. That's why I'm I'm pretty much old school and I always believe the center is supposed to rule the paint and I don't mind um Mitch occupying the paint. Uh, the one thing I wanted to make clear um, is I think he's there. If, you, if you're going to criticize Mitch, you're going to have to at least put part of the blame on Tibbs because I think Mitch plays the scheme that Tibbs designs for him. I think Tibbs wants Mitch under the basket for the offensive rebounds, and that's where he's going to be. And on defense, he has three priorities. That's why you don't see that many defensive rebounds. His first priority is boxing out, and I – and from my understanding, I think he led the lead in boxing out. His second priority is defending the pick and roll. Then the third priority be uh, defensive rebounds. But I think he's he's so focused on his first two priorities. That's why you see the lack of defensive rebounds. I think his position as far as boxing out and his defense makes it um makes it more available for other people to get the rebounds. I think his, he improves the team rebounds, even though he's not getting the rebounds himself. But that, that's basically what I said. I, I'm defending Mitch. I think he's that type of player. If you're going to have a different type of team, then maybe he, he wouldn't fit in. But the way the team is orchestrated now, um, I think he's the best person for that position. And I think that he's I with. Because Tibbs is that's where Tibbs wants him, to do exactly what he's doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I agree. I agree in terms of how the team is constructed now. No doubt, no, no doubt about it. I appreciate you, Curtis D. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah salute, bro. Yeah, come back anytime. Salute. Okay, Thanks thank you. I, I, I enjoyed this. Yes, yes. Thanks for the call. All right. Um, Anthony D, come back on. We're waiting for you. Anybody else? Anybody with any thoughts about anything the callers have um said mm, not really i mean maybe because we've gone through this mitch mitch argument for it's been a while now i guess maybe because um he's polarizing because some people you know about his offensive game whether he developed one in the last five years that's why mitch is such a polarizing figure to me like a lot of people think he should have developed an offensive game, but that could just be Mitch. Maybe Mitch might not ever have an offensive game or touch around the basket. I don't really think he is going to. So I'm, I'm to the mindset that Mitch just needs to be better at what he does. Great. Not trying to ch change him into something else. Like Mitch is never going to develop a mid range or outside shot, a consistent one, at least, at least not to me. I just want um, a center that can do those things though. Right. Right. Let me go to the chat. Anthony D, stop making excuses for Mitch. He's overrated and a one trick pony. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, Patty Cakes, we need a. 
That's funny. <laughs> I think we, we just went over like all the little things that Mitch does. Like I think there's like three, four tricks that he does, right? <laughs> this guy comes on. He's a one trick pony. <laughs> right. We need a shooting wing way more than we need to upgrade the center. A center I that agree. plays Mitch's defense and scores is called an MVP candidate. But Patty Cakes, I think you're missing the point. I don't think anybody is saying we're looking for somebody who does what Mitch does and score. Right. I, I at least that's not that, at least that's not what um what I'm saying. Um let me see. Mitch got at least take an open shot. Yeah. See, uh, see, I think that that's what I disagree with now. I used to think that way, but now, <laughs> no, I don't want him taking the open shot for what? Like, I don't think he's going to hit the shot. So, and the, until I see him doing something like that consistently, then no, I don't want him taking that shot either. I like somebody else to take it. Yeah. Yes, Bo Ishmael. He is the longest tenured Knicks. Mm hmm. Okay, Antoine Jenkins, why doesn't Mitch work on his game in the summer? It's confusing. I mean, I think he is. Coach, what center do y'all want? I, I just have a prototype. I don't, I don't, um, you know, I don't know who's, you know, available. All right, let's let Wiz on. Uh oh, he must be driving. Let me turn. <laughs> yeah, with, the windows, with the windows <laughs> and the rooftop up out in sunny California. Yeah, okay, that's exactly what's happening. The sun, the sun is too bright behind me, so okay. you wouldn't. Be, I couldn't see myself on camera. That's okay. why. Yeah, greetings, yeah. greetings, greetings, superstars. <laughs> How are you? I actually owed you a song last week. I yeah, you Wiz, yeah, Wiz, you know, I have one request <laughs> <laughs> that you sing one verse. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm going to do? You ready? I'm going yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you my, my what's, my, what's her verse? Because, you know, when I think about the Knicks yeah, winning a championship, with the way they're coming to constitute it with Mitch at center, it will be just my imagination. <laughs> 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 what <are you> in the way? <laughs> so Queen, y'all. So Queen, yeah, I, as I always say, the Queen is always right, and this time she's definitely right. If we want to win a chip, yes, Mitch is nice. Mitch got can get us to the second round, probably ECF. Who knows? In a you know crazy world. Possibly to the finals, but I just think Mitch is our other weak spot that is going to be our Achilles heel. And part of it is, oh, he, I hate following great takes. I hate following great takes. And these last, your last two callers blew out of the box, and I, and I can't stand it because I want to be the man. I want to be like I'm the smartest <laughs> one. I want to be wins, wisdom. People go, hey, that's a great take. But now I got to follow those two guys. I mean, and to hear, the fact that Mitch is being misused or not utilized properly or not used in a sequence where he may have to lose 18 minutes one game. When I heard that, I'm like, yes, yeah, everything you're saying, I'm like, yes, that's exactly the way. Which really comes back to our offensive coordinator, which happens to also be our head coach. But what I do want to say is that one player, and maybe it's I Heart, needs to come in. Who does give us a threat, and that's what we need. We need a threat of the of the scoring. So basically, I'm going to repeat what the Queen said. You get a championship. What the, I'm going to say, what the Queen said, ditto. Yeah, what she said. That's it. And I'm going to come back to, although can we get to a real challenge in the finals? Only if we can get the offensive coordinator to utilize our centers, our alternative centers, whether it's um Randall. Or who knows? Maybe even um, like the yeah, I Heart being thrown in there with a crazy small lineup. It's I think it's possible, which means that it's possible we can win. And I'm gonna keep hope that teams are gonna find 
some somehow he's gonna tap into the queen's knowledge and he's gonna be like, oh, switch this guy off right now. And boom, here we go. Championship. And hopefully he will call you out, Queen, when he gets that trophy and be like, <laughs> you know what? You know, dope soul sports talk. That's how I got this championship. Thank you, thank you. First gonna thank mom, then he's gonna thank, you know, I don't know who else he's gonna thank Brunson, and then he's gonna thank Dope Soul Sports Talk and the genius is on there. The genius is all the panel is crazy, man. I, I can't stand coming on here with you guys up there. Because you got the two crazy, knowledgeable and great takes. Okay, all of you. It's even I guess an even that guy's an even because everybody. Anyway, that's my take, guys. Thank you for having me on here. Thanks for calling me. I mean, I want to be clear. For me, I think it's both. And I and I said this, but I just don't want it to be lost. I think it's both a center who's a scoring threat and improved three-point shooting. Like that type of offense, um, I think would make it really hard to, to, to guard the Knicks. So for me, it's not just a scoring... Uh, uh, I'm not even talking about a stretch center, but a, a center who's a scoring threat. Not just that. I think the Knicks also need improved three-point um, three shooting. Because when you think about what Miami did to us in the playoffs, you know, you can argue, you know, you know, part of it was they were able to use Mitch Mann to crowd whatever, but and so you couldn't get in the key, but we couldn't shoot. Right. We couldn't shoot. So shooting gives you spacing as well. So this is not all on me. We, we're talking about Mitch today. But in terms of how I see the Knicks offense is not just on uh, on Mitch. I'm just concerned. We get into the playoffs. You can game plan Mitch off the floor. Then you don't have three point shooting. You just got you just got a dead in the water. But you have a scoring threat at center. You got three point shooters. I just feel like you have a you know a better a better chance and and the Knicks still have to figure out how to be a good defensive um team. Let me let um right but this show is like Mitch is the topic of conversation, but we just talked about RJ last week and upgrading him too. Right. We right. talked about upgrading Grimes because he's not as aggressive as we would like. Right. So, but like right. Mitch isn't the only upgrade that a lot of us would want. Right. It's, he's just the topic of the day. Right. Of, of this show. Let me bring in um, Salute AD. AD. Quiet dog. Tell us what it Mitch is. Mitch is a bum. <laughs> That's you it. to give Jeff a heart attack. <laughs> That's because Jeff wants to be his agent. Get out of here. Mitch is a bum. Get out of here. Oh, my God. I'm not even going to kill Mitch that bad. Let me just point something out. Let me just say something real quick. I don't want to stay too long. Salute to the chat. Salute to everyone. Do you realize that last year when Mitch got hurt, which is his yearly thing to get hurt, I heart played the best center that we had since, since who? Tyson Chandler. It's not even debatable. It's not even debatable how much better he was than Mitch in the starting role. It's always something for Mitch. It's he had to put on 15 pounds. He had to get used to the pounds. All I know is that Bam Adebayo served him his lunch. Okay? That's all I know. He's never played meaningful games until this past playoffs. What? At all? Goodbye. I'm not. I won't be crying for Mitch. Well, let me ask you this: Was he a bomb in the Cleveland that... series? Okay. I'm sorry. Was he a bomb in the Cleveland series? He was serviceable in the Cleveland series. He was serviceable to 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 decent, to decent. But Cleveland, none of Cleveland's big men played that well at all. He didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> You know what? I'll give you that. He was okay. I'll go a step further. He was okay, but nobody on Cleveland were good, were very good for the entire series. When we look at Mitch, right, Mitch is now going into his sixth year. 
In five pre- in five previous seasons, has Mitch averaged thirty minutes per game? In any one of those five seasons, has he averaged over two blocks per game? Since defense is his main calling card. Like, come on! Does he ever? Look, does he ever? It. Does he, it's not as good as Miles Turner. How about that? He's not late. He's nobody's thinking that he's the big man that was that's out in in Minnesota in his prime. He's not that great. Even at defense, he's not that great. He's okay. Like he wasn't better when iHeart had the starting job. And I'm gonna slide to Steph's point real quick. Steph said, if you have better defend a better what better defensive players in the perimeter, you wouldn't mind benching Mitch for iHeart, right? I'm here to tell you his defense is not that important. I'd bench him today for iHeart. But I don't want to keep you guys. I got to run. I just want to jump on for a couple of seconds. You guys have got a great show. I'm listening, as always. Appreciate you, AD. Thanks, Thanks AD. Good call. Appreciate y'all. Word, word. Peace. For sure. Peace. Any, 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 any thoughts on that? Yeah. President, we'll start with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to me, look, I, you know, he said that iHeart was so much better. Do the advanced stats back that up? Do, do, the, do the numbers, if we take a deep dive and compare, well, I mean, this is a question. I don't know the answer to it. I haven't done it, but I let's look either. at it. Were, were we that much better? When iHeart started on the floor, I mean, I, I I tend to think that that's not that the numbers don't actually back that up. But if they do, then you know, hats off to AD and 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 that that's an outstanding point. But 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 were we good are- enough to win? Because even if his stats weren't as his advanced stats weren't as good as Mitchell Robinson, was it still good enough for us to win? I mean, the Knicks were a very good team when Mitchell Robinson started. Uh, you know, I, 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 Jeff, and, and, you're and, the point. I get yes, yes, yes. The Knicks are a very good team when Mitchell Robinson starts. But how much of the drop off? How much of the is there a drop off when iHeart is in the game? Like that's the you know th- that's the question. If it's significant, then yeah, I think that makes a difference. If it's a little drop off, but you're getting more on the offense, it could be a net positive. I don't know. I'm with you in the sense that we have to, um, you know, we would have to figure out those games. I don't think it's hard to look and see the games that Mitch was out and then run the, you know, run the advanced stats on the Knicks and just, you know, what was the winning, what was their record, you know, just all of the team stats um, during yeah. that time. I don't, I don't think is 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 hard to, hard, hard to do. Um, I've never looked at that, but uh, look, if that, the the numbers are what the numbers are. That's what I'll say about that. If 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 what AD is backed up by the numbers, then then that's a fantastic point. And I, I don't really have anything to come back from that. I, I but I I honestly would be surprised if that was the the picture that they paint. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say without knowing. And you know look, what? I've been wrong lots of times, so this wouldn't be the first. If 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 it is, then then like I said, credit to him. Right. I, I think I heart's defense is underrated. I don't think he's at Mitch level, but I don't think he's a bum on the defensive end um, either. And I think his offensive rebound and he's really good, you know, and, and, you know, there as well, his defensive rebound is really rebounding is really good um, as well. And his position defense is really good. He's where he's supposed to be. Um, he's not the rim protection protector as Mitchell, but you do get some rim protection with, um, you know, with, with I heart. And when I ran the defensive, um, you know, the defensive rotations, I was looking at IQ versus quickly. And then they show all of the, you know, all of the teams. I think this is a testament to quickly. Whenever quickly, like there was a lineup with Brunson, Barrett and iHeart. And defensively, it, it was only, it was a small sample size, probably 106 possessions, 120 possessions, something like that. The defense was really good. And they broke it down into 
the opponent's scoring position at the rim, in the mid-range, at three-point shooting, and it was orange across the board. But the key, in my opinion, to that was quick. Because when you took out quick and you put in Grimes, it changed. There was some blue, you know, there was some some blue, blue areas. So the point is, you know, it can work if you have better defender, you know, perimeter defenders. You got quickly... And that was quickly Brunson and, and um, RJ and iHeart. Just saying, iHeart's the what, the best backup center in the league to me. So I, I don't I don't have a, like as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, Isaiah Hartenstein's a very good basketball player. Uh, I don't think he's a better he's basketball player than Mitch, you know. Uh, but I but I think he's a very good basketball player. And and I think it's awesome that we can put 48 minutes of really good center play on the on the court, whether whether it's I heart or Mitch like, you know, mm-hmm. I, and, and they work in tandem. Well, they're you know, they they bring different things to the table. So I have no problem with 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 I heart whatsoever. So, uh, you know, I, I I happen to think Rob Mitchell Robinson's a better player. Um if you disagree, that's fine. I think he's still young. He, him and Mitchell Robinson is about the same age. So he's going to continue to get, uh, he may continue to get better as well. Um, I just don't see where Mitch can get better. Cause I don't think Mitch is going to be, but be- he can get better defensively. Don't get me wrong, but offensively, I don't think that's going to happen for Mitch. Um. Okay, let me get to some. Keith Turner, I would go as far as to say Hartenstein is better than Mitchell Robinson. Coach, y'all did the same thing with Noel. Okay. Keith Turner, I wouldn't lose anything if we traded Mitch and started Hartenstein. We would actually be better. I, I heart stopped up. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to like bring all the I heart. They just happen to be coming up. I heart stopped up a lot. Defensively, people just like to say things about Mitch. He put up two blocks his first two season seasons. Kevin Bergen, Mitch isn't a bum, but I do agree that if we trade him, I'm not crying. Depends on the player. I take it that we get back. Personally, I like iHeart Mitchell Robinson rotation. If you need a little more offense, iHeart can sub in. He'll be more comfortable in year two with us. I mean, that's a I I do like that too. And I thought Tibbs did a good job, particularly in the playoffs, rotating those two guys out, depending on what he thought we needed, depending on what the defense, you know, was doing. There was games, I think even during the seasons when iHeart with season. When iHeart would play more minutes um, than Mitch, so I I do like that, and I think you know that's probably Tibbs in the front office, basically coming to the same conclusion. We need to have another you know option in certain you know in certain situations, um, and bringing you know bringing him in, paying him eight million, which seems like nothing, but it was more than the Clippers was willing to do or could do. And we were able um, to get them. Let me bring in Mez Simons. Hello there. How are you? Can you hear us? Mez, you there? Yeah, hello? <clears throat> nah, they probably stepped away, Steph. All right. Why are we waiting for Mez? Yes. You know, hit that like button. Hit the like button. We had 120 watching, only 52 likes. Let's hit the like button, man. It's a beautiful Tuesday. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You get it? Oh, uh. let me put up the um. Oh, I'm talking about people not calling in. Hold on. Let me um. Yes. So those who want to call into the show, you can hop on the panel or you can call into the show as well if somebody is on the call if you can just wait for them to get off before you call in because there's no way to hold 
Yeah, there's no way to put you know to put you on. You can't park a car while we're right, right, to right. Yeah, definitely hit the like button. We got 119 listening. I appreciate you. We got 56 likes. Hey, Queen, did you want to talk about that giveaway, or you want to say that? Today? Yeah, we'll probably do it Thursday. But so what we're we're doing a giveaway. We should probably courtesy for sure. courtesy of Jay Boogie. And what I think all players who wore number six have to get a new number. I think they're not mistaken. They're retiring. What's his name again? From the Boston Celtics, Bill Russell. Russell. Bill Russell. Bill Russell. They're retiring his number, so no one can wear the number six. So we're gonna give a giveaway. We'll do it Thursday, where you predict what number Grimes is gonna wear next season. And the winner will get the giveaway. And if it's multiple, you know, multiple people who pick the right number, we'll put it in a raffle and um, um, pick. Um, Antoine, staff, stop saying Mitch a rim protector. He never averaged two blocks for a season, barely one. Well, well. What do you mean, barely one season is what you're saying? Because I think he's averaging 1.5 blocks. Maybe there was a time when up. Oh, Kevin Bergen says, not true. If you have the number, you can keep it. Okay. Well, we'll 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 find out. And Mitch has averaged more than or averaged two blocks a game his first two seasons. Like that was a true, mm -hmm. true stat. So he he's averaged and he averaged close to two. I you know, I round up. Like if it's over 0. 0.5, I round up. Mm -hmm. And Mitch was at like 1.8 the last two seasons. So he pretty much gets two blocks a game. Like the lowest he's had is 1.5. So he pretty much averages two blocks a game. That's okay to say. Yeah. So I will say I'm not I'm not sure what's going on between Patty Cakes and Keith Turner, but I will say. We can agree to disagree in the chat, and we can agree to disagree in the panel. I'm reading the chats. I don't see anywhere where Keith Turner is being disrespectful. He has um, he has strong opinions, as we all do, and that's welcome here. This is not the Palm Palm podcast, if you haven't figured it out. This is where we reel and where we're honest, and you can say what you want as long as you're not being... Um, disrespectful to um to others so i would say patty cakes i'm not sure what you're referring to in terms of um i don't know if you said reporting him to youtube but i don't really see anything here um and i really do not want him blocked from my chat right he, he's a he's a day one member as many of you are and 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 I don't, I'm I'm reading the chat. I don't really see anything super offensive that he needs to be reported. We have moderators here, and I probably need to make more people moderators and see if I could take care of that. We have moderators here who can, you know, block people and put them in timeout, um, if you know, if need be. Um, Oh, she's Patty Cakes. I don't know if it's a male or female. It was a joke. Okay. I wasn't sure. All right. All right. All right. My bad. My call bad. in. Call into the show. Y'all got something to say? Call in. Yeah. A lot of people in here. Um, JJ said he'll call in soon. Nice. You know, I would love to hear from, I would love to hear from Sherwin. Man, Sherwin, Sherwin, I, I, Sherwin's, he don't want the smoke because he don't want to call. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would love to hear from. Uh, yeah, I would love to hear from Sherwin. So Sherwin, Come on, call in. Come on, Sherwin. Kerry Cox. Kerry Cox has called into the show before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he last week. He had a good call. Yeah, definitely. People funny in the chat, man. Salute to the chat. Yeah, Flock C Mac mm -hmm. C Mac call in. All right, Mez is back. I hope I got that right. Hello there. Yeah, hello. How are you? 
I'm doing good. Just know. Thank you for having me on this panel, Queen. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yes, Absolutely. Sir, yes, You're sir. welcome. You're welcome. What you got for us? All right, so this is my honest opinion. Um, Mitchell Robinson, he, I feel like, in my opinion, I feel like Mitchell Robinson, I feel like he has to go, honestly. I'm not the biggest fan of Mitch. He's He has one strength, and it's just defense. That's all it is. He ha- he serves nothing offensively. Like, if we had a guy like Miles Turner, that's a different story. That's a completely different story. And the chat is over here talking about Miles Turner. He's overrated, you know, this and that, and et cetera. That's not the case. If he was on his team, you guys would be saying differently, <laughs> you know? So having a big man that can, you know, stretch the floor would be amazing. It, it would be good for Jalen Brunson, you know, Julius Randle, and maybe even R.J. Barrett, you know. It doesn't clog up the paint. You know, it's always crowded in the paint. Mitchell Robinson is just always, you know, standing at the block. He's a lob threat, you know. He doesn't really do anything offensively, but defensively, he's amazing. I'm not taking that away from him, you know. But Miles Turner, if, if we had a big man like Miles Turner, I'm telling you, I wanted that guy for the longest. I was always hoping for maybe like a OB Toppin and Mitchell Robinson for Miles Turner, you know, type of trade. But I already know that, you know, that wasn't going to happen. But it would have been nice. Maybe like throw, you know, first round in there maybe. But people would probably be like, I'm crazy or or whatever. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, well, I'm not going to, you're right. I do think there are some who don't like Miles Turner. Um but he does have some support, though. He does have some um, some support. Do you think if we got better three-point shooting, would you be able to live with Mitch? If we got better three-point shooter, would like I? Do you think that would help this, the, 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 you know, our space in some as well? Yes, most definitely. Um, I mean... One example is RJ Barrett. Maybe if if you know he can up that you know that three point percentage a little bit more to at least thirty five or thirty seven, maybe a little bit too high for him. But you know if we just improve shooting around Mitch, maybe that would be a little bit more accept acceptable. But as you know, as for right now, I'm just not. I'm not too happy. You know with you know, with Mick and, you know, the lack of three-point shooting isn't making it any better, you know? So I just feel like having a stretch five would definitely improve this team offensively, defensively. It would kind of hurt us a little bit, but Miles Turner is not that bad of a defender. He's actually a pretty uh, pretty um, decent defender. He actually, you know, can block shots just as good as Mitch, if not better, but his – paint intimidation or his paint protection is not as good as Mitch. You know, he's not as tall as Mitch, but you know, a six foot 11 three point shooting center that can play a little bit of defense. I'm choosing that over a big man who can just play defense and just, and not be able to really do anything on the offensive end, you know? So that's just my take on Mitch. Um, Listen, if we can get Miles Turner, and and I hear the chat, you know, JJ, Turner's not a great defender, shot blocker, yes, but he has the tools, and you have to think, you know, if he comes over here in in this system, just because a person doesn't do it now doesn't mean they can't ever um, be that because he, you know, because he does have the tools. But Miles Turner is just not available. (laughs) <laughs> you, you know, he's just unfortunately he's not. He's 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 not available. So um yeah, yeah. And someone said, How many games, Gerald B? Appreciate you. How many games did Turner miss a seat? Listen, Mitch played 59 last season. He's not the pillar of, of health and availability as well. Right. But he may have um played more games last season than Miles Turner. I'd have to take um you know, I have to take a look. Um, look at it. Oh, he did. He may okay. have. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Miles Turner is he an injury prone play uh, yeah. type of? 
play it? Yeah, oh. he, he's had a, a storied injury history. Yeah. Oh, for sure. right. right. Well, but I would take that trade off. I, 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 I would take that um, trade off because I think he could be better defensively. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, salute, man. All right, guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks for the night. call. Thanks for the call. Um, any, um, any, any thoughts on that? On that? Not just good that we're seeing. We we got two callers for each side for um, Mitchell Robinson. That's good. Right. Let me. Um, um, someone said they're legally blind, so they need me to read. Um, call out the read the number out. So it's three four seven three zero nine seven one two seven. That's three four seven three zero nine seven one two seven. Hello there. Uh -oh. Do y'all hear anything? No. I don't. No. Cole, are you there? Hmm. Yeah, usually we hear it ringing everything. Yeah. Yeah, true. Okay, make sure you sure. The... Let me just make sure I don't have two. I don't think so, though. Yeah, make sure you got the Bluetooth. Turn yeah, it's on. yeah, it's 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 connected. Huh. Oh wait, hold on. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Caller, you on the air? What's your name and where you're from? What's up? It's JJ from Brooklyn. How you doing? Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, right. JJ. What's up, buddy? I didn't know JJ. you were from Brooklyn, JJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you guys doing? What's going on? We, uh, uh, the, these are the dog nice, days of nice. content creation, so we're trying to make it through the season. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> make it work, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What you got for yeah, us as man. far as Mitchell so, uh, Robinson? Yeah. Uh, it's tough because you can't say he doesn't impact the Knicks. Like, there's things that he does, obviously, that help the team. I give him a ton of credit for the way he played in the playoffs versus Cleveland. That was big time. I, we don't win that series without me. So I have to give him credit for that, the way he just dominated that glass against two, you know, the two Twin Towers down low. But we know what happened by Spam. But my thing with Mitch, it's, I just don't think our offense is good enough to just have a guy who's basically a liability offensively, you could say. I just feel like five years in the league, he should have developed some sort of offensive skill whether I'm not even saying like a three point shot, but at least like a post game, a hook shot. And like one other thing that really bothers me with Mitch is the hands. If you don't throw him the perfect pass, he drops every pass. He's like Nerlens Noel. If you remember Noel, he he had the worst hands. Mitch is the same way. If it's not the picture perfect pass, he fumbles it, he comes down with the rebound instead of just keeping it high, he brings it down low and it gets stripped. I, I think I would move on from Mitch. I think I think I would move on. Like one thing that I liked a lot about Mitch in, when, in his uh, younger years, if you remember before he put on that extra weight, because he was tired, I guess, I guess of getting abused by the you know the heavy set throwback type centers, mm -hmm. he would block shots on the perimeter like nightly, like once or twice a game. So he doesn't have that quickness anymore where he could defend on the perimeter like he used to. Right. I liked that much more personally. Like I'm sure, it, I'm sure it helped him like defensively versus the stronger centers, and you know probably on the offensive glass. Right. But I loved that Mitch. He was blocking shots from on the three point line like like it was nothing. And now it put the extra weight, it slowed him down a little bit. You know, right? So it, it's tough. I just it's tough. It's a tough call, honestly. I have a question for you. you no. Know, Whoever's calling yes. in now, whoever's calling in now, if you can wait until this call ends um, to call in because I can't put you on hold. Would you. So are you saying that you think we should switch out the center now, given our poor perimeter play, our poor shooting? You think that right, would still, right. that would still be OK? Or do you think if we move on from Mitch, we would have to make other changes as well? 
I think you would probably have to make other changes. I would say the three spot. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you had a defender, like you were saying earlier in the show, Steph, if you had a grind and then an OG, you know, then it's like you don't need a mix because you're not going to have guys getting blown by as much. Those are two plus defenders out there, you know? So I just think it's not all Mitch's fault. I think some of it is also the roster's fault. Right. You got RJ and Randall. I mean, Randall for, for a four, he's an okay three-point shooter. I'd say like average-ish, you know? He has his moments. Right. But I don't think people look at him as like a three-point shooter. You know what I mean? Right. So Grimes, you know, stuff, you know, Grimes is my favorite Nick, but he yes. could be streaky as well from three. Right. I can't call him a knockdown shooter right now. I can't I can't say that. Again, he has his moments and then he has his terrible moments where he can't hit anything. Right. So but if I could yeah, I would definitely like to have a center with at least some sort of a post game, at minimum. A mid range, a little something. You can't you can't be playing vote four versus five versus a team like Miami in the playoffs. They're too smart. They're way too smart. They're not. They're not gonna. It's not gonna work. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know who that perfect center is. I really don't know. It's tough. How many guys could score and defend at the five? There's probably not even ten of them. Right. It's tough. Right. You know. It's a tough call. It's yeah. definitely a tough call. It is. I'm not gonna say just dump in. Just dump in. You know. Right. It's a tough call, definitely. Right. Definitely. You got a fan, JJ. Yeah. A Andrew K is in the chat said, This caller is good. Is that your good caller? <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Yeah, the but show. that's pretty much all I got, man. Yeah, no. thanks so much. You guys take care. Keep yeah, up the good work. Thanks for calling. Appreciate you, JJ. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. All right. All right. Appreciate it. That's a, that a good call. Yeah. Yeah, man. Call, whoever was calling in, now the, the phone lines are clear. You can call in now. But, Adjay, you wanted to comment? No, I was going to say that's a good call. You made some good points. Um, and I think I kind of pretty much kind of said, well, earlier when I first started, I said, you know, I'm okay if they keep Mitch, but if they want to, you know, I won't cry if they get rid of him. You know, if, if they find something better. The problem is, who, who are you going to find to replace him? You know, it's got to be a balance. And we might be able to do that, Steph, because, you know, we don't know this team. We don't know what this team's going to be like because now we have uh, we have Josh Hart. We have DiVincenzo. We have new players. And, and we have – this is Grime. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Take the call. Call from King Scientist. All right, King Scientist. How are you? You on your air on the air? Where are you from? All right, salute, salute, Queen, salute to the panel. I'm salute. from Brooklyn, from Flatbush. Yeah. Hey yo, listen, I've been there we go. Yeah, yeah, be clear, Brooklyn is in the building. <laughs> oh, hey yo, listen. I've been a Knicks fan for fifty I've been born I'm born in nineteen seventy one. I'm fifty two. Mm -hmm. I've been a fan since I've been two years old. Mm -hmm. So dig that. Um, salute to the panel. I wish Jay Boog was here because I wanted to holler at him, but listen. All everything that you do, Queen, yo, I love it. I love your disposition. I love the way you present the questions and the way you critique things. I love your averse opinion about certain players. Um, and anyway, listen, let's get on Mitch. Dig this. And this is just my opinion. You know what I mean? Looking at basketball, as a person who plays basketball, there's nothing wrong with what we got with Mitch. If RJ steps up, and does what he should be doing, what he's capable of doing, tweaking the things that he needs to tweak. Jalen Brunson continues to do what he do and be the leader that he is. And Randall gets his mind right where he's in the game. Mm -hmm. Then anything that Grimes does that's an upgrade, we're going to be fine. We have to have some kind of defensive anchor. So if RJ steps up his defense, Grimes steps up his defense, and Mitch is already what he is, we have what we need as a starting five. We just need it to cohesively work in the sense where when Randall's playing where his mind and his brain is in the game and he moves the ball and doesn't sit on the ball and look like he's stuck, like he's thinking about what he needs to do, killing the shot clock, when he's not doing that, we're moving, we're flowing. To me, yeah, my turn is cool, all of that. Listen, don't try to cast your curls before swine. You know what I mean? Count your blessings. How long has it been since we had a center that can do half of what this man is doing? 
sent to your boy to play with Melo. Um, um, you said his name Tyson earlier, Chandler. the big tall dude. Tyson Chandler. Chandler. Tyson. Listen, man, stop looking for, I'm not saying it to you, but I'm talking you about Knicks Nation, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop looking for this quick fix, got to have this multifaceted scorer. Defense wins championships. You have to have a submittable, formidable defense. That's why if you look at it in that aspect, don't worry about Mitch catching a lot. Listen, you know why Mitch only get average two blocks a day, two, two, uh, two blocks a game? Because the rest of them know not to run in there because he's going to send it to the eighth row. That's why they ain't going to come in there when Mitch is there. So that's my position. Again, I love the NBK family. Um, and uh, I have a I'll question, be trying to though. holler at Sam. Okay, go ahead. Do, do you, I know defense, the mantra is defense wins championship, but do you think the NBA is changing some where, yes, you do need to be uh, at, at least an average defensive um, team, but do you think the, 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 uh, the league is changing such that you don't really have to be a good, as good a defensive team as you once needed to be? Well, let me ask you this. I, in a way, I see your point, and I do see that. Um, especially when you look at how most teams are running small ball lineups, right? So it's a lot of running and gunning and not so much focus on no clamp down defense. But let me ask you a question. Um, and I didn't get to see it, of course, because I can't see. And usually I'm listening to everything through you or, or replay or, you know, the whole mix of different podcasts. Um, who, what was the ultimate thing that made Denver – just Miami off? Was it their defense or was it their, their just their cohesive offense? I think it was, in my opinion, I think it was overwhelmingly their offense, but I, I, I thought their defense was good too. Like, I don't think they were the 90s Knicks. I, I don't think they were Miami, but I do think, yeah, I think their defense was good. Right, enough to stop Miami from do making think- runs. Right. I mean, let me ask the pit. Let me throw that over um, to the pan. Denver's kind of a little special, though. Um, but what for Denver? Do you think it was more their offense or their defense, or a little, a little bit of both? Um, the caller who's calling in now, if you can wait until this call is over, because I have no way of putting you on hold. Anybody want to take a stab at that as far as Denver is concerned? Oh, I, that I think it's a little bit of both. It's a it's a it was a great balance between offense and defense. Um, you have, I mean, they they have a couple of players who are like, you know, some real dogs on defense, and you have the the the, the guys on offense who who are leading the pack. You know, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray's not a great defender, but you know he's okay. But he's a he's a hell of a of a scorer. Um, same thing with Jokic. Jokic is not a great defender, but he's very smart. Like he, his IQ, like on defense, is good. And of course, you know we know he could score the ball, so it's a good balance. And when they needed defense, they came in with the guys to play defense with the Bruce Browns, you know the Jeff Greens, and you know some of these guys. They bring him in when they need to stop the bleeding or when they need to keep Miami in check. So it was a per- it was a great balance between the two ends of on the two ends of the floor. Right, yeah. they were able to get like timely, um, right, timely stops. Right, he subbed in at the right moment. He bring the right guys to 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 make the right plays. Yeah, I, I um, mentioned Denver earlier in the show. Um, yeah, both of their offense and defense, they, you know, especially like you said, Steph, timely defense. But on offense, I just knew at all times, it seemed like all five players on the court can shoot at the same time. And it's not even just because of Jokic either. Even when he went out, they just replaced him with like Jeff Green and they went small and they were still able to shoot every position. Like all five players, they just moved the ball around. Jamal Murray pretty much was penetrating and moving the ball around, and they just had all shooters around them. And that put a lot of pressure on Miami's um, exactly on, on, on Miami's defense. And, and and another thing on offense also, it, it also helped that every game, a different player a different player caught fire. It you it know? also helped that Miami didn't shoot well, especially not as well as they did against us in Boston. So that combined with all the other intangibles, they couldn't keep up with Denver. Like, I know defense win championships. I agree with that. But that series, they won a the championship because they was outscoring um, 
Miami. I don't think they were some great defensive team. I think Miami was just not shooting well, just like we stopped shooting well in the playoffs. Yep. Is the caller still there or did they um, hang up? I don't think it went through. I was talking about the caller that was on um, oh, name? King, King Science, I think that was his name. If he's still on or he's still yeah, what, um, I don't know if that was E. I don't know if that was E. That E Rude, that's how you say him, E Rude, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, listen, I was on your show a week ago telling you about drinking your coffee in the morning when I typed in I'm legally blind. This is me, King right. Scientist. Right. Yes. But yeah. Um, what the, the other brother just said, I don't know if that was DJ Shuttleworth, the coach in, in Denver inserted the right people at the right time to clamp down defense and stop the bleeding. So that's my point. We already got that insert in Mitch. So if we, if our, again, that's why I said it goes back to RJ. Just imagine if RJ uh, shoots three shots less and makes one or two of them, his percent will go up. Now, Grimes, Grimes to me is a silent secret weapon assassin. Grimes can really surely turn this next level up for this season, and we won't even be having any kind of discussion like this come March. But I think we might because what I'm, what happens? Listen, Mitch Mann is in the key. He's just he's he's just crowding. You know the key. You can use him the double team. You can use him. I just think it could be a problem. What I like about the Knicks, again, we have Hartenstein on the bench, so you could just right. sub Mitch if 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 it does get to that in the series. And we did this. We did this last year. You just sub Mitch out and you sub um, Hartenstein in. If it gets to it gets to that point, because what Miami did, what they took away Mitch's offensive rebound and his his second chance points. Now he was even more limited on the um, offensive end, and his guy just stood in the key. And in the Cleveland series, they was using Jared Allen to double team Brunson, leave Mitch and double team Brunson at the top of the key. Right, because they so didn't what have about to respect. Mitch is involved in more pick and rolls. Yeah, I'm with that. Because that's the answer to me and what you're talking about. You want to get him from standing in the paint? Let's put him in some more pick and rolls. Let him set some double screens. You seen Mitch screen? I'm and I'm I, and maybe you know somebody said in the chat one time that that was by design for Mitch not to make a lot of contact contact on the screens so that he can kind of slip through. I'm I'm I, I'm not sure what to make of the the Mitch's screening. But well, yeah, Queen. Um, thank you for taking my call, and um, mm -hmm. I'm always listening. Usually, I can't type. I have to get my daughter to help me type. She's ten, mm -hmm. so um, but I'm always listening. And any chance I get to try to, I'm gonna actually save this number. Yes. Yeah, so if it. you do the show, you know I can try to call back in again. But salute to the NBK family, Dope Soul Sports. Yeah. Um and all everything that y'all do, man. I love it. I support it and go Knicks. Appreciate it. We're doing Thanks, typical man. next week. So yeah, save the number. Yes, Thanks. you bro. Good call. Right. Thanks blessed. for the call. All Thanks right. for the call. Yeah. All right. Good call. Salute caller. Call we from oh. Kareem. Hold on. Kareem. Six. Caller, you on the air. What's your name and where you're from? Kareem Grant. Steph, what's up? It's Kareem. How you doing? I'm good. Oh, Kareem. Kareem. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing well. Shout out to the whole panel. Good seeing you fellas. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great show as always, man. I just, um, you know, watching after I got off work. Um, I, I, what you said, Steph, was um, a, a pivotal thing, right? So, like, we can't act like the league is not changing, right? And, you know, I, I love this fan base, man, but I think, like, when, when a lot of the older fans talk, it's like they talking like it's still 25, 30 years ago. And that's, that's obviously not the league, right? So right. you were just talking about Mitch being in the paint, right? Of course, not only 
is he in the paint? He's clogging up the paint, and he's in that dunker spot, right? And that limits ball movement in the paint from our slash, even though we don't really have, like, crazy slashes. But I really believe that not only do we need – I wouldn't say an upgrade. I would say somebody that can at least stretch the floor to where, you know, we can have – a you know, a variety in that in that um that position. You know? If you if you look even in the playoffs, these run runner defender type centers, they don't play late in games because they're a liability. Because they can't shoot the three. Yeah. I, I think we saw that when you think about Boston, a lot of times they would take out Robbie Williams and put in Robert Williams the third, I believe his name is, and put in Al Horford, you know, to stretch yes, the defense. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that, and you could look mm-hmm. when you was watching the games, you looked at the key, you was like, whoa, that looked like a parking lot, like Walmart after hours, you know. That's how <laughs> yeah, that's how <laughs> wide open the key is. And and now you're able to do you know, do some things. And not only that, you're spreading it out such that you how you go out and Tatum now. With nobody behind you, with with that with the with the defensive center now having to guard Al Horford, you on an island now against Jalen Brown. You on an island now against Tatum, and that could be the same for us being on the island against Brunson, being on the island against um, R.J. Barrett, who can get to the basket no matter what. Um, finishing is another story, and you're on an island. With Randall, all I'm saying is that it just opens up more possibilities for us offensively. Yes. And, and, and Steph, I'm going to tell you something. What you just said was perfect. What you just said, getting those easy baskets that they're perfect for a team like us that struggled shooting last year. Yeah, we did. Right. We did struggle. <laughs> we did struggle um, shooting. I was looking mm-hmm. at the stats today from 4 to 14 feet. We were ranked 10 in the league. Anywhere else, three mm-hmm. pointers, we was ranked 21st. At the rim, we were ranked 21st in terms of in terms of finishing um at the rim. And I just yep. wonder us for those rim, the rim ranking, if that would have been better if there was more, you know, if there was more spacing. So I think the Knicks have to find yeah, a balance. We- Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, my bad. Go ahead. No, no, that was it. That, that's it. Now they do have to find a balance. So what you said is, is 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 great because the thing that helped us, you know, what made our offense efficient last year was offensive rebounding, and we took care of the ball. You know, and then of course Randall would get hot in those. He was like the hottest player in the first first half for a while. Right. So we got off to good starts there. You know, when he was hitting. But you know, I I, I just can't wait. You know, like I think. Steven Chenzo was a good addition, but we need, we also need a wing too. Yeah. Uh, an, an elite wing. Yes. We need that. You know, we lack there as well. Yeah. You know? No, no doubt. That's why I said I think we need both. That takes our offense to another mm-hmm. level. You got three point consistent three. And listen, maybe we'll get the consistent three point shooting this season. Maybe Grimes will be, he shot a good percentage, but maybe he'll be more consistent. I mean, from game to game. RJ looked good in FIBA. It's, 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 I mean, I know the three-point line is a little closer, but may, maybe his three-point shooting will be better. He looked really good in FIBA. Maybe quickly we'll start off the season. He looked good in FIBA every year. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Come to us and play like hot garbage at the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hopeful, though. I'm hopeful. And yeah. then if you get quick starting off, you know, quickly, pun intended, with his shooting, maybe our shooting mm-hmm. will will be better, and I think that will help our spacing some too. It's not on Mitch being able to shoot the three. No, nah, it's not. Spaces. It's not. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Because I ain't gonna lie, a lot of the like I I do agree with you there because a lot of like the basketball basics at times we don't do well. Fast break, um, you know, facing the floor on the fast break is like everybody, and you know, a lot. Of, I I was um talking about this with a friend the other day. And I think we explored this with Sim. Shout out to him, right? Where in a defensive system, right, your offense is, a lot of the offense is predicated on defense and then getting easy fast break points, right? 
So in a defensive system, the offensive portion of it, it doesn't look pretty, you know? So, but, you know, but I, I think, honestly, when we spoke about Tibbs, like, possibly, them possibly bringing someone into the organization that could help us have, because we don't have a lot of off-ball movement. We lack at that. You know, and it's we're very ISO heavy with Jalen and, uh, you know, Randall. And I would like to see somebody that could come in and implement some, you know, plays where, because we got, like, come on, we got DiVincenzo, we got Grimes that, you know, could possibly light it up if, you know, we had that all ball movement and more spacing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I mean, um, Tibbs was – um. Tibbs was at um, FIBA. Maybe he was, you know, talking with Steve Kerr about some, you know, some things that um, they can implement. I'll say this, though. Whatever the offense is, you got to knock down shots. Right. I agree with that. You do. do. You can have have cutting on the backside. You can have pick and rolls. You can have whatever it is. When they stop that first option, that second option, you got to pass the ball out. You got to be able to whoever that is has to be able to hit the shot, and I'm real. I'm hopeful that that'll happen for us this year. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. I, I, I can't wait. You know, gotta yeah, get no football. Yeah, hopefully our teams in that sport don't give us heart attacks. You know, get <laughs> <laughs> the basketball season. You know, <laughs> right, right. All yeah. right, Steph. I appreciate you having me on. Of Shout course. out to you, fellas. No. Thanks for calling in. Good Thanks job. Good call, man. Yes, Luke Lane. Good call, bro. All right. I appreciate you guys having me. Have a great night. Okay. You, too. Right. you too. Yeah, man. Spacing is so important. That Al Horford was damn near 40 years old and he was playing like 30 minutes a game last season. Just because he could stretch the floor. So, yeah, it's important, man. We don't have anybody that could do that. I, we thought when Hartenstein came in that he was going to do it and he didn't. Plus one, four, one, oh, we got another one. You guys up for it? Oh, we lit. Oh, yeah, come on. Let's go. <laughs> it was for them, yeah. Uh-huh. Salute, salute. Can you say your name again and where you're from? Hey, my name is Quentin Gilliam out of Baltimore. How are you? What you, what up, you got for us? All right, so like, I have the same problems a lot of people have with Mitch, and I guess the only way I can, well, one of the ways I can describe it as in 2018, I got me a brand new Mazda 3. It was tight. Now, five years later, uh, I see everybody with these uh, challenges and charges. And, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe maybe Mazda ain't as nice. Or maybe, you know, I need to, you know, get, you know, level up, so to speak. And I think that's similar. Like, Mitch, he's doing his all right thing, you know, in his limited capacity. You know, but now we like, as people like, uh, Miles Turner and uh, other centers like to do multiple things, you know. Maybe it is time to, you know, get that charge or that challenge. Yeah, I mean, if it's a, if it's, if it's a, you know, if it's available, I wonder though. With Tibbs, he's such a a rim protection guy. I don't know, you know, that's his baby blanket. I don't know if he would even feel comfortable bringing in a, another center who, like a Hartenstein, not, it may not be I Heart right now, but I mean, I, I, I Heart who can pass the ball, has a high IQ on the, you know, on the offensive end, um, you know, can, you know, can, can shoot, or, you know, what have you, and is an okay defense. Like, I don't even know if Tibbs would be up for that. Right. I think Tibbs would drive a hoopty into the transmission fallout. That's <laughs> <laughs> word. Word, definitely. And I ain't with I ain't with Trey. Anybody's all you got all these Instagram scouts. Oh, this person unfollowed this team and this whatever, whatever. I don't want Trey to have the damn team from Joel and B. You know, and they got everybody saying, "Oh, he he disliked them on social media." Or some craziness, yo. I, have we not learned the Carmelo Anthony lesson before? Have we not learned that giving up your your whole team, one player, it don't work in the NBA? You know what I mean? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just frustrate. So I think it depends on the level of player. I think it depends on on the level of player. 
And I'm not sure to Carmelo Anthony that, that that was the issue who we gave up as much as it was what we didn't do after we got Carmelo um, Anthony. I think you can argue that. I'm not a big fan of M- MB. Well, I shouldn't say that. He's a very good player. I like him. I don't like your best player being a center unless it's a joker. Mm. I just think you can. Well, I, I, get right I just think that those guys, you can crowd them. There's things that you can do that kind of um, impact their effectiveness. Um, so I would prefer my best player to be a guard or a wing. But don't get me wrong. If the Knicks, were, <laughs> if the Knicks brought Embiid in here, uh, I, I'm not crying. Yeah, Joker is different because oh, yeah. I was just gonna say that Joker is different because if you double him, he has the vision of a guard. So right, right. It's just like doubling a guard. Right. Right. What is the window for for our boy Mitch? What is the what is the the uh, wind like the time limit? I mean, like how long is a t- uh, good enough time before we say, all right, well. RJ's pretty much showed himself. And Mitch pretty much showed himself. And can't get any better. Like, what is an acceptable like time frame for the team or for those individual players? For the, yeah, for those two individual players. Oh, I've seen enough. <laughs> oh my god and with RJ, i have to say i'm playing the percentages I, I i i can't say that he is not going to get better um it's what's okay. the chance is it a 90 percent chance you need to hold on tight or is it a 30 percent chance and it's a chance i'll take you know what i mean um that's yeah. kind of where I am. You know, like at a certain time, we got to like stop riding the wave of mediocrity and make a move. You know, we see these great teams that are being built off draft pick. I think like to um, you can't you can't really tank anymore, but moves have got to be made, and that's my time. I appreciate y'all. Please. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thanks for the call, man. Yeah. Thanks for the call. Rolling in. Call, bro. All right, y'all. All right. All right, y'all. Peace. All right, peace. Any thoughts on what any of the callers can say? We just put them together. We haven't had enough uh, enough space to really talk about them, you know, individually. But any thoughts on anything that was brought up with the last few callers? Yeah, man. I told you, Mitch is a very, very polarizing figure. Like half the callers is almost to like very split in half. Half the Carter callers want him out. Half the callers love Mitch. And I know the last caller. Um, described him as a Mazda three, and you called him a Ford Escape last week. <laughs> That's not what so, I was trying to say. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know what Mitchell Robinson, you know, what he's capable of. He just has limitations. If you're okay with those limitations, then you know it is what it is. But some people just aren't. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Nick Yak, we're not talking about. Okay, so what I was talking about, there's the paint, which is one to four feet from the rim, the sh- the which is the the short mid range. No, that was the rim, one to four feet. The Knicks do very well, four to fourteen feet from the basket. They do very well. They're ranked tenth in the league. At the rim, though, one to four feet, twenty, you know, twenty first. I I mean, listen, I I don't know. Um. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Just wanted to um, explain that. Anything else? Oh, let me just get to Paris Duggar real quick. Embiid with a Brunson type best player is a championship with Divincenzo and Josh Hart in pieces. So basically, you, you don't you don't wouldn't see Embiid as the best player. You see Brunson as the best player. I mean, okay. I mean, okay. I guess, I guess he's just saying with those two players on the court, opposed to Julius Randle and Brunson, and beating Brunson with those type of role players is a championship team. That's what he's saying. I'm yeah. guessing. I'm not arguing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we got Embiid, I ain't going to sit here talking about 
Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> I'm worried he gonna get crowded out in the yeah. in the fucking playoffs. Yeah, we ain't gonna have no cram to understand and be right, right, right. Put some, <laughs> right. Right. Put some shooting around it and 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 let's go to work. Right. Um. Any anything else anybody wants to um say about anything we've talked about um, today? Well, I did. Um, I, I'll say something real quick. I did. If you guys haven't listened to it yet, the audio podcast that Steph put out with Jeff, it was very good. Jeff, Jeff did his thing. Maybe that's why, you know, he might not get all his thoughts out tonight about Mitch because he talked about Mitch for like pretty much an hour. <laughs> and, and, it, and it was very, very good. It was compelling, man. Like Jeff definitely likes Mitch. It was, it was, it was good. It was good. I like how he got Steph a little frustrated because she couldn't, <laughs> you know, come back at him like she wanted to, like in this type of setting. Like it was right. all about Jeff getting his thoughts out about Mitch. And he was at whether you dislike Mitch or not, Jeff is smart enough to damn near make you get on his side. Right. Think about almost. it a little bit. Yeah, Jeff almost had it. <laughs> almost had it. But yeah, it, it was a pretty it was a pretty good show. It was definitely good. You're gonna want to go out and vote for Mitch after you hear the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, very good show. Yeah, it 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 definitely definitely was. The um, actually, I could I could drop the um the link, but we're about to to get out of here. Those who are subscribed to the newsletter, it should come out tomorrow. The editing is Wait. taking a little longer than I than I um. You know, then I thought Worth it would. Wait. No big deal. Worth the wait. It's good stuff. Yeah, for sure. I want to put the link here in the chat. And all right, I got it. No. Oh. Do we have time for one more caller or? Yeah. <laughs> Call from to accept. Hello, calling you on the air. Can you repeat your name and, and where you're from? Oh. Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Right. <laughs> um, so, Queen, earlier earlier we missed the call. Somebody in the chat said that staff are done but dialing you. <laughs> oh man right yeah, so i pinned i pinned the um the audio podcast that um jeff did on mitch and there was something else i wanted to say but i guess that's good enough any last any last words we'll be back thursday we'll talk about the schedule the nba schedule dropped today um, nice. I thought we would have um, a little bit of time to talk about it, but oh, the person is back. Last call. call from the mall. Hello, caller. You you on the air? Hey. hey. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> Poor Jamal. <laughs> See. Ya. Oh, at least you caught the name, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Mega NYK is a staff. Staff are done. Stay butt dialing. So it's, <laughs> it's, that was that was Mega. That was Mega. Salute to Mega. Mega. <laughs> Mega's oh, Mega always in his strong man. Salute Mega NYK. Mega's the man. Mega's yeah. awesome. <laughs> right. Um. Any any um Nick Yak, if you wanna if you wanna call in, we will wait for you. Got some strong Mitch supporters. Come out the chat. It come on, but anyway, any any last words? Oh, man, salute to the chat. Chat was awesome as always. As Give always. them likes up though. Likes was looking real Mitchell Robinson from the free throw line ish. <laughs> <laughs> get get those up a little bit. We got what well, they got it up to eighty. They got it up to eighty six. Okay, okay, but um, we got one hundred and seventeen listeners. So can we get to a hundred before yeah, we get man, out of we, here? We gotta hit a hundred every time, man. Every time. Yeah. Come on, y'all. We got yeah, thank you all, though. This is a great show. Y'all did an amazing job. Thank you for calling in and being brave and 
hopefully we'll get some more of you to to, to yeah. call in. We had some fantastic calls and opinions fantastic. tonight. Great job, guys. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, some great calls tonight. Absolutely, yeah, man. definitely. I, and listen, next week we're doing Tom Thibodeau. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm gonna do a podcast with with Sim. Uh, so if there's anybody else who is not a Tom Thibodeau fan and you also want to record a podcast, I'll record too. That's I'm 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 good with that. But you got to say more than I don't like Tom Thibodeau. Like right. you, you got to. There do- are people who don't like Tom Thibodeau. Yeah, <laughs> you got to give your reasons for. I mean, I don't think you got to get into advanced stats. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. But you just got to be able to say more than I don't like him. Yeah. He, he uh, plays so and so. I mean, just you know, tell me why you you know why you don't like him. I think he could do this better. I don't like when he does that. So, like I said, you don't have to be getting into advanced stats, but just be able to articulate, you know, your opinion. And it's a conversation type. I I do my best not to intervene. Um, yeah, and and not to push back um, a little. I try. I, I, I try. I try. <laughs> I was about to say you should have uh AJ and Sim on the same show and just have them fight. Mm, that would be that <laughs> turn your mic off and just have them fight. That, yeah, that would be a, actually no, um... Sim, 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 Sim and Steph talk about Tom Perry. I, I, it's gonna be a love fest. It's gonna be all lovey dovey up in there, man. Actually, I have some, I have some things about um Tom Thibodeau I I I I don't like. What you do? Of course. Yeah. Whoa. Sorry. Call from Day day. Uh, Calling you on the air. Oh, okay. That's that. We we're not answering any more. Any more. Oh. <laughs> Third time's the charm. That's it. <laughs> right. We all had the shot now. <laughs> right. Uh, there's things about Tom Thibodeau that I don't like, but not liking a coach and and saying that he needs to be fired is two separate things. And then I also think that the fans really act like they're coaches and really act like they know what should happen in any particular situation as if there's only one right answer and he didn't choose it. So he, he need to go. It's, it's so many different, whatever is happening on the court, there's many ways a coach can go depending on their philosophy, depending on their feel for the game. They can make the right decision and it not work out. They can make the wrong decision and it does. I just think there's too many um, variables and it's just easy to be a Monday morning quarterback. That, that's, what that's, we do, that's what we do in Knicks Nation. Yeah, Monday, no, Monday no morning quarterback it and that's, wow. that's the fun no, part of it. I don't yeah. know. Sometimes, no sometimes I'd be like in the moment. Sunday afternoon, pissed at Tibbs too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like right there in the game, like I'd be mad as hell sometimes. No like, doubt about it. Me too. I'm like, I wouldn't have did that. Right. But I say it that way, to, to, as opposed to that was wrong. Who does that? You were supposed to do it right. this way. Like that's that's. How do you know that? Right. You right. know what I mean. But I will say I don't like that. <laughs> Or I will say, what is he doing? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. But to say I don't understand is one thing, because you're acknowledging that there's certain factors and variables that you're not aware of. So, like, I don't understand what that was about. But that's very different than that was wrong. He shouldn't have did that. He was supposed to do this. As if you know, as if you're working with all of the, um, the variables that he is. So, to me, that's different. But, yeah. I, there's certain things, and I'm a, and when I do my newsletter, and when I do the podcast, I, I, and when we come on the show next week, I'm gonna be honest about certain things I don't like, I don't understand, certain things I wish he would do different. The do sub in game six. The, all, Sunday, all, all, Sunday all, the, all the subs in game six. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> Sunday afternoon. I was pissed. Yeah, that, that, that one. That, I like Tibbs, but that one. J- Jarrell, he I had know. just played 48 ga- minutes in game f- before, and we won. Playing 48 again. Right. This is, you win or you go home. Oh my god! Elimination. Yeah. Unless Jalen Brunson had to go to the bathroom and couldn't go on the floor, he wasn't. He shouldn't have came out of that game. Listen, sometimes when you got kids and you on them long trips, you bring what them little empty water bottles. Yep. You handle your business, <laughs> right? <Just go> <laughs> <to the top. laughs> Call Give them a time out if you go on the floor. They got to clean it up. Exactly. <laughs> we okay. Yeah, like that. 
yeah. So yeah, I, I'm I'm not saying, but I think it's it's I think we underestimate Plus what it eight, takes to eight, seven, two, three, how three, many five, quality five, coaches five. they are. No, nah, we <laughs> let me take it off the thing. Yeah, we no, underestimate no. how many quality coaches there are in the league, and we feel like we can just get rid of one and go pick up another one. And that one, he might be better in one area or even two. But overall, those coaches are taken. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, any any other? No, let's, all right. Let's get the likes to 100. We only eight away. Hit the like button on your way out if you have. Yes, 92. Done. Let's get it to 100. Oh, Listen, yeah. I, I appreciate yeah. you, Jeff, um, Jarrell, Ajay. Um, I appreciate being here. There's no show. Yeah. You know, there's no channel without the panel, as I or, right. or you know always say. So I appreciate you guys for consistently showing up, um, Jeff, for being a great addition um, to to the panel. Stafford Don, Jay Boogie, delusional Nick fan when he's able to um, get on. Settle. Yeah, and um, wow, Tony Tony asked me. To drop the link and, and and he knew I was gonna forget. Let me see. see Tony. Oh yeah, because Tony really really liked um, Mitch too, so he could yeah. he should have got his right. But he didn't text me. He said he would text me and remind me. So he didn't. So he's probably have something um, to do. But until next time, family. Looking forward to next week for sure. Gonna be fine. Peace. You tune in, that means you're feeling the vibe. Feel that. The bell rung, you already been subscribed. That's right. right now, the queen, she on live. Right now. Just pull over with no phone in when you drive. Uh. Dope soul sporting with the talk. Uh. First lady from New York, New York. Brooklyn. All my people, you rocking with the chat. Hit that. The like button would tell me where you at. Uh. You know, step from the NBK. Wanna raise up NBK. Hey. Hey, real lady, where she holding it down? No matter way how you feel, she, she gon' greet you with a smile. Sister, you one of a kind. Yes. Oh, sister, it's time you That's shine. Her. Don't stop. Where you at? Where you at?